Hello brothers and sisters, Brother John here with some new and important information regarding our soon departure and the rapture of the church. Please stay tuned till the end to make sure that you get all of the information which is very important and urgent. The deadline to the fig tree generation is approaching on May 15th, May 16th due to the fact that the moon must turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. The blood moon is a necessary requirement for the rapture, it is one third of the rapture sign, meaning that you cannot have a rapture without a blood moon. They go hand in hand. The sign of the rapture is in the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun must turn to darkness and the moon to blood, and the stars are going to fall to the earth. The stars might be angels, or they might also represent saints that are in heaven right now. But when the stars fall, that's when the woman gives birth. And we could see that very clearly in Revelation chapter 12, which is a summary of the events that take place during Daniel's 70th week. And it starts with the woman giving birth to the man-child. So the rapture happens before the seven years of wrath. And I say seven years because according to the Levitical law, in Leviticus chapter 12 verses 1 through 3, and it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. I believe these seven days are hinting us towards Daniel's 70th week, which starts with the birth of the man-child. The woman is going to be ritually unclean for seven days, which are days of years. And the eighth day is when the man-child is circumcised. Which is very interesting because from May 15th of 2022, if we were to count forward 2,520 days, which is the duration of Daniel's 70th week, that takes us to the date of April 7th of 2029, which is Nisan 22nd on the Jewish calendar, or it's also known as the eighth day of Passover. And this is the day when Isaac was circumcised, the first man-child to enter into the covenant that God made with Abraham. I believe this is a parallel to the day that we will be presented onto Jerusalem, circumcised, and we will be that first man-child to enter into the covenant with God. Almost everything that God does is in sevens. Everything. There's seven seals, there's seven trumpets, there's seven bowls, there's seven lampstands, there's seven angels, there's seven churches. The day of the Lord is on the seventh day, the Sabbath day. I just cannot see the Great Tribulation lasting only three and a half years. No. It's seven years. God does everything in sevens. Some of the Jews are going to be deceived by the Antichrist during the first three and a half years. Then at the middle of the seven years is when the Antichrist is going to reveal himself by sitting in the temple of God and showing himself that he is God. At this point is when many of the Jews are going to be taken captive and they're going to be scattered to all the nations for the last time. And this occurs during the last three and a half years, which is known as the time, times, and half a time, or also 42 months. We also have a convergence with Hosea's two-day prophecy. And I know that many brothers and sisters have been deceived into thinking that the rapture is imminent, but the truth is the rapture has never been imminent. Could Jesus have come in the year 200 AD, or 300? or 400 or 600 or in the 1500s no no why because prophecy the church age must last two days that is 2,000 years 2,000 years is the fullness of the Gentiles it's the fullness of the church age after 2,000 years we enter into a new dispensation that is the day of the Lord the Sabbath day lasting a thousand years there is a parallel in the story of the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. That 40 years is 40 sets of 50 year jubilee cycles. 40 times 50 is 2000, meaning that the church age would last 2000 years 
and then Joshua comes on the scene Joshua being Jesus and when Joshua came on the scene we saw that it took him seven days for the walls of Jericho to fall these seven days represent days of years and they're hinting us towards Daniel's 70th week after Daniel's 70th week we will enter into the promised land with Jesus when he comes and returns at the Battle of Armageddon and we all return with him on white horses also Jesus told Peter that he was gonna be an old man so from the very beginning they knew that his coming was not imminent because Peter had to become an old man and not only that but the gospel also had to be preached to all the nations all around the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end would come and the temple was also destroyed in the year 70 AD the Jews were scattered all around the world and in order to fulfill end times prophecy the Jews must be living in Israel so how could this have been imminent if the Jews were scattered and they did not have a nation for nearly 2,000 years it doesn't make any sense it would only be imminent to folks that don't understand biblical prophecy and the church age must last 2,000 years and Jesus's passion was no later than 30 AD this is according to ancient Jewish records that are in the Talmud it is attested in multiple places in the Talmud that for 40 years prior to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD that the sacrifices in the temple were rejected and the doors of the temple would fly open at night the Jewish rabbi said this in the Talmud it is recorded during the last 40 years before the destruction of the temple the lot for the Lord did not come up in the right hand nor did the crimson colored strap become white nor did the westernmost light of the menorah shine the doors of the temple would fly open by themselves they would close the gates of the temple by night and get up in the morning and find them wide open all of this happened because our Lord Jesus Christ put an end to the sacrifice and offerings when he died on the cross 40 years prior to the destruction of the second temple so to all those that believe that he died in 31 AD or in 32 AD or even 33 AD that is incorrect the Jews themselves said in their own Talmud that for 40 years the sacrifices of the temple were rejected on the day of atonement the crimson colored strap would miraculously turn white to prove to the people that their sacrifice was accepted but only in the last 40 years of the temple would the crimson colored strap stay red a sign that their sacrifices were rejected because Christ put an end to the sacrifices in 29 AD when he said it is finished and when the moon is at the maximum eclipse it will be twilight in Israel as Paul says that the rapture will happen in a twinkling of an eye the day will be dawning into the 15th day on the Jewish calendar in Israel you must eat the lamb before the sun rises on the 15th day the bread from heaven which sustained the children of Israel during their 40 years of wandering through the desert meaning that our bread from heaven Jesus was good for two days that is 2,000 years this is according to the Leviticus law in Leviticus chapter 7 verse 18 it says and if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering be eaten at all on the third day it shall not be accepted neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it it shall be an abomination and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity do you get it are you understanding the Passover lamb must be eaten within two days that is two thousand years if not then Christ's righteousness will not be imputed onto whoever that person is that offers it it will be considered an abomination and that soul shall bear his iniquity do you understand this is huge it's very significant I'll explain again the two days are 2,000 years Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world during the church age which is the 2,000 years you must eat the Lamb of God that is Jesus that means you must believe on his finished work on the cross 
believe on his death, his burial, his resurrection on the third day for the payment for all of our sins. Within the two days, this is a requirement according to the Leviticus law. In order for Christ's righteousness to be imputed onto us, we're going on 2,000 years from Nisan 1 in 29 AD, and it's coming up on May 15th, May 16th. If I am correct, this would mean that it is the end of the church age of grace. And of all of the years that I've been watching and studying, I have never seen anything aligned so perfectly with the scriptures and with prophecy as this date here, May 15th, May 16th. It meets all of the requirements necessary for his coming. There's a blood moon, which is a requirement from Joel chapter 2, verse 31. Check. The good man returns on the second Passover. That is according to Proverbs chapter 7 verses 19 through 20. Check. 2,000 years since the cross. The prophecy in Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Check. All of the necessary requirements for the rapture to occur are all in place. They're all in line. And I'm all in on this day, May 15th, May 16th, being the day of the rapture. It just makes perfect sense biblically. Even the planets are aligning and testifying to this very time that we're living in. I've been talking about May 15th, the second Passover since last year. I've had my eye on this date for years now, for a long time. Years before I ever even made a YouTube channel. I got this YouTube channel started to blow the trumpet for this exact day because I have not seen anything like this in all of the years of my watching. And I'm not one of those watchmen that just pick every single feast day for years and years and years. I don't want to wear folks out. I don't want to get folks' hopes up just to let them down over and over and over again for years on out. This is why I'm very careful to pick only the most high watch dates and they must fit and align perfectly with what end times prophecy requires for his coming and I'm telling you I've never seen a day so perfect before May 15th May 16th looks beautiful meets all the requirements necessary for the rapture to occur I rather warn you and be wrong than not warn you and be right in Revelation chapter 3 verse 3 that says if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Implying that if we are watching, we will know the hour. Don't be deceived. The devil doesn't want you to be watching for Jesus Christ. He wants to keep you in the dark so that that day comes as a thief in the night. But we are the children of the light, the children of the day. And that day will not overtake us as a thief because we are not in darkness. He doesn't want you to know the sign of his coming. He wants you to think that it can happen at any minute to wear you out so that you get tired and that you fall asleep. He doesn't want you to understand prophecy but to keep you ignorant. Folks, I'm warning you and I'm urging you to warn others and to preach the gospel like never before. As Pastor J.D. Farag says, prophecy has a shelf life. And May 15th, May 16th is the deadline for the fig tree generation. And it fits perfectly with Hosea's two-day prophecy using the Enoch calendar of 364 days that was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls and is also in the Book of Jubilees that was also found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I apologize in advance. But if I'm right, I couldn't live knowing that I did not sound the alarm. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. I hope to see you all very soon in our Father's house. Maranatha.